Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about inverse functions. But first, we need to know that in order for a function to have an inverse, it needs to be one-to-one. -one. Here is the text definition of what it means for a function to be one-to-one. -one. And what this translates to is that each y value in the range is associated with just one x value. So the x values and the y values are one to one. If you're given a graph, you can use a horizontal line test to determine if a function is one to one. You'll draw a horizontal line through the graph, and as long as it doesn't intersect in more than one place, you have a one to one function. In our first example, we're given four points, and we need to determine just from looking at those points if our function is one to one. To do this, we're going to look at the range, which are the y values. We have negative 5, 1, 4, and negative 3. What we're looking for is, does this range, these y values, are they associated with exactly one x value? And since our range, our y values, don't have any repeats, we know that each one is associated with a different x value. So yes, this function is one to one. Now, if we had another point in here, say the point three, one, because this has a range value of one and our initial point here had a range value of one and they have different x values, that would make this function not one to one but that's not the case here. Let's look at the next example. Here we're given a graph and we're going to use the horizontal line test to determine if this graph defines a function that's one to one. We're just gonna draw a horizontal line anywhere through the graph and see what happens. This horizontal line intersects in two points, so no, this graph is not a one-to-one -one function. Or you can see that when y equals two, this range value here, we have an x value equal to negative one and we have an x value equal to one. Let's look at another graph. Here we can draw a horizontal line and notice that we intersect in only one point. Therefore, this graph is of a one-to-one -one function. So now that we know what one-to-one -one functions look like and how to find them, we're gonna use that information to help us find inverses. So if f is a one-to-one -one function, then g can be the inverse of f and both of these conditions need to be true. So the composition of f and g evaluated for x needs to equal x. Likewise, the composition g of f of x also needs to equal x. And keep in mind that it needs to be true based on the restrictions of the domain. In example four, we need to determine if the two provided functions are inverses. So what we need to do is evaluate the composition. So we're going to start with t of v of x. So remember what that means. We're going to substitute in our v function for x in our t function. So we'll have four over, here we substitute in for that x, we put our v function minus one. Now let's slowly simplify. We want a common denominator here, so we're gonna change one to x over x. Now this will allow us to simplify that denominator because we can combine the numerators of the denominator. That's kind of crazy to say. Let's simplify the numerator of our denominator some more, those x's will simplify out and we're left with four over x. Remember this is equivalent to four over one times x over four. 
and these fours simplify to one, so here we're left with x. So the first composition checks, now we need to look at the composition v of t of x. So remember you're substituting your t function into your v function. So we'll have 4 over x minus 1 plus 4 over 4 over x minus 1. Let's get a common denominator here in the numerator and that would be the x minus 1 and our denominator can stay the same. We're going to simplify our numerator. I'm going to actually combine them as well as distribute this 4 at the same time. So we'll have 4 plus 4x minus 4 and again that denominator stays the same. Continue to simplify the numerator. The 4's simplify, so we have 4x over x minus 1, 4 over x minus 1. Let's change this to multiplication. So we have 4x over x minus 1 times x minus 1 over 4. Notice what simplifies. The x minus 1 and the denominator and the numerator become 1, and the 4's here become 1. So this composition also equals x. So yes, these two functions are indeed inverses of each other. Now, what if you're given a function and you've determined that it's one-to-one -one, or you've been told that it's one-to-one -one and you need to find the inverse? Well, there's four steps that you follow to find the inverse of a function. And here are those four steps. And we'll go through those as we solve example five. In example five, we're given a one-to-one -one function and we need to find the equation for the inverse. Step one is to replace that function notation, f of x or whatever func function notation you're given, replace that with y. So you have y equals four minus x over nine. Step two, you're going to interchange your x and your y. So you'll have x equals four minus y over nine. Now you wanna solve this new equation for y. So here we wanna multiply both sides by nine. That'll give us nine x equals four minus y. Let's add y to both sides so that we don't have a negative y. So we'll have y plus 9x equals 4, and then subtract the 9x. And you have, we'll put it here, y equals 4 minus 9x. And then your last step is just to replace your y with the inverse function notation. So f inverse of x equals 4 minus 9x. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math videos.